smell at it. I woke up this morning, I looked outside, and, and it was snowing. And I leave Friday from uh, Detroit, and I'm going to uh, Brazil. And I uh, so you know, the next thing I did was I looked and seen if uh, what the weather was. It's supposed to be 96 or 98. Anybody got some sunscreen that won't me? <laughs>
That's not a light equation. That's the actual color of the soil. It's called Metonia Red. It's a silt loam. The best thing about this for contest is it dries out very nice in spring and it warms up very nice in spring. But everything that's great in spring comes back in March and middle of summer because it dries out and it gets hot. So all of our red ground is irrigated, all of our black ground is non-irrigated. We have no tile on our farm anywhere. This ground percolates very, very well. So we don't really, that's one expense I don't have to put up with. That's just a root pit, my pointer is not going clear up there, I'll show you. But our topsoil is about 14, 18 inches deep, but if you dug a root pit down a little bit deep, it would be red from top to bottom. We run a monosim twin row planter on all of our contest acres, whether it be corn or soybeans. Yeah, the monosim planter is the most accurate planter on the market. All of our normal production acres, we run 24 row central fill John Deere planters like everybody else. But in our contest situation, we do run our monosim planter. This is just some small twin row corn. But you can see a plant some bee pattern, dying pattern. You know, once you set this planter, it's going to drop every seed exactly like that. I also dislike drills. I'm in an opinion if you plant soybeans with a drill, it's no more than a semi-controlled spill. <coughs> the problem with the drill is they're polluted, they dump them out piles, you can't control the depth, you can't control the spacing. And if we want to achieve high yields on soybeans, we've got to plant it just like corn, equal distance spacing. Bam, bam, bam of that. You want every plant, corn or soybeans, to come up in a 36-hour window. Meaning that when the first one comes up, you want all those brothers and sisters to come up in that 36 hour window. Because anything that comes up past that, especially when you get out there 72 hours, is no more than a weed. It's not going to put an ear on, it's not going to set pots. So it's crucial to get these plants up in time and, time and fashion. This is just, uh, I'm standing out here in some small corners, 58 different varieties behind me. That's the easiest thing everybody can do. Is Parent to write genetics for your farm. Plant what's going to work for you. Put the right hybrid on every acre. Those are just free. It's all the same price. Just make sure you got the right stuff out there. This uh, I call my temple experiment. We actually did this quite a while back, and uh, I was talking to some research scientists. This just give you an idea how my brain's always working, trying to dream up new crazy ideas. I said, Steve, I said, is there any way that uh, we can influence that irrigation say B4 to B6. He said, possibly if I have a white light back up off the ground, maybe you could add three or four rows. So I went to wife's kitchen cabinet, I swiped her tin pole, went and laid it on the ground, and it worked. Still testing them for that 100 acre method yet, but it did work. That's just some short season varieties for us, a 105 day hybrid 35 by 40. That's an early corn, early for us. We'll plant, start planting corn around the 15th of March. Harvest this stuff about the 1st of August, try to beat the heat. That's a pivot track back there, but they're, they're capturing 100% of our sunlight. There's no light penetrating through that canopy. Nothing's hitting the ground. I want to capture 100% of my sunlight. This is my favorite picture on my whole slide presentation. <coughs> this is some more 31 in 48. We grew a couple years ago, made about 350 bushels. That's twin row corn. You can't really see the other row of ears at it back here because they're basically all the same height. But my favorite part about that whole picture is every ear is dipped back one inch. And that's a plant will stand about 56, 58,000. Well, in 2008, we grew some 35 bed 40 dry land no till, non irrigated, made 322 bushels acre. That was sick. I have no idea what it could have been. Every ear was rounded over where it had two on it. But a final stand of about 35, 36,000. So if I push that plant population, you know, maybe it would make 350 dry land. Funny story, I was at the Commodity Classic a couple years ago and this reporter, Corn Soybean Digest, says to me, uh, Asked me some kind of question. I'm sitting in the back because we went to the market session and I drank a lot of coffee that morning, so I was sitting in the back in case I needed to go get rid of some of that coffee. And, and uh, Gary Porter, my good friend, he's also a seven or eight time national corn growing champion. We're sitting back there minding our own business. And this gal turns around and she says, uh, and started asking me questions. She says, Why does all the winners use less nitrogen than the, uh, the losers? 
Well, I said, uh, I said, would you just